Hi everyone, I'm Glenn, and today I want to introduce you to front-end application bundles or fabs. What are fabs? Well, they let you package up your application and deploy it to production regardless of what kind of app you're building. Today I'm going to show you a couple of examples, from a React app that runs entirely inside the browser to something fully server-rendered, both deployed in a few seconds to more than 200 locations worldwide. Along the way, we'll talk about some of the design decisions inside Fabs, the kinds of possibilities they open up, and how you can get started straight away. Let's jump in. I'm starting today with a new Create React app site, but really I could pick any modern front-end framework to get started, and there are examples of a bunch of others in the Fab docs. To start building and deploying fabs, I need some configuration, but I can use npx fab init to generate that for me without having to install anything. This utility does its best to figure out all the config you need, depending on the framework that you're using, but it's a work in progress, so let us know if it doesn't fully understand yours by following this link. What fab init will do is generate a fab config file add some scripts to your package JSON, add some lines to your gitignore, and then install the required packages. In order to support the full range of front-end frameworks, a fab build is broken up into a series of small plugins, and we can see three here that are needed for a Create React app. You can find the documentation pages for each of these on the fab project homepage at fab.dev to understand a bit more about how they fit together and what the others are. Here we've added a fab config file, which is a JSON5 file, which is basically JSON with comments and single quoted strings, which I'm liking a lot. We'll get to that in a minute, but first let's look at package JSON. Here we can see we've got some new scripts, and the one we're interested in is this build fab. Note that this starts by running npm run build and then runs fab build, which is actually pretty common to fab projects. Let's see what happens when we run it. The first step is for our normal Create React app build to take place, with all the web packing, bundle splitting, optimizing cleverness that's in that project. That's not what fab is trying to replace. Instead, fab build runs after that and turns that production-ready code into a special portable zip file called fab.zip. That's what a fab is. If you're curious to see what's inside that zip file, you can check .fab build. Here we can see the assets directory and the server.js, which we'll come back to in a bit. For now, let's just spin this up in a local server using Node.js by using fabserve to make sure everything's working. And it is. Now, you could use this Node.js fab server inside a Docker container or deploy it to your own infrastructure. It can run anywhere that Node can run. But today, I'm interested in deploying somewhere a bit more global. For today's example, I'm going to use Cloudflare Workers. It's a fairly new platform, but it's really perfectly suited for hosting front-end projects, so I tend to use them a lot with fabs. Their big feature is just how quickly they can be deployed, how fast they are to boot up, and how many locations they run in. Let's see what it takes to get our new fab deployed there. In order to deploy, we need to jump into our fab config and add some deploy configuration. If you're doing this yourself, there's a few extra steps you'll need to go through, which is all documented at these links. But for now, I'm just going to be pasting in config I already have. This config sets us up to use Cloudflare Workers to deploy our server component to the URL demo.fab.dev and publishes the static assets, which is all the compiled JavaScript, CSS, images that make up the bulk of most applications, on AWS S3 in this bucket. Other configurations are possible. You'll find more information at this URL. But just as a side note, once you start getting comfortable with fabs, we actually recommend deploying them automatically every time you push, rather than manually from the command line. There's a bunch more information about the benefits of that approach at this link. We're keeping the sensitive deploy config in environment variables and referencing them here. So the last step is to copy my .m file that contains my secrets into this directory, and we should be good to go. We call fab deploy on our fab.zip that we just produced. It figures out what packages we need, so once they're installed, our assets get synced up to S3, and our server-side component gets pushed to Cloudflare Workers. Success! Our Create React app is now deployed to 200 locations in only a few seconds, which is cool, but it's not the reason fabs are so groundbreaking. You might have noticed we have this server component that's being deployed here. 
But those familiar with Create React app will know that it has no server. It's entirely statically generated and renders on the client side. This is where fabs are actually a new type of deployment artifact. This plugins section is actually generating a tiny JavaScript server. One that's based off a static directory of build can render HTML efficiently and securely with a fallback to index.html for all pages and rewires assets proxying requests that don't match the strict fab structure. What this means for you as a developer, however, is that taking a static site and adding your own sprinkling of server-side logic is as easy as adding another plugin here. Let's make one. Again, I'm going to paste in something I've prepared earlier. What this plugin does is declare a server-side route on slash geolocate that hits a geolocation API from wherever this fab is running. It pulls out the country, the region, and the city, and then formats that as a simple string. You'll notice that we're calling fetch here and returning a response object. This is actually the same fetch API that you use in browsers and in service workers. So hopefully it'll be familiar to you. Now we don't need to rebuild our whole app here. We just need to regenerate the fab with our new plugin. So we can call fab build to just rerun that step. Let's see if that works. Yep, yeah, it's saying that our server is running in Balham in England, which is pretty close to where I live, so we'll call that a pass. Let's push this up to Cloudflare. Well, now it's running on Cloudflare, but of course the nearest worker's location is London, which isn't very different. But if you hit this URL from wherever you're watching this, you should get somewhere pretty close to you, which is kind of the point. I can basically put anything here and it'll run a few milliseconds away from my users, even if most of my site is totally static. You can see a bunch more examples at this URL. Okay, so that's an example of a static site where we use the plugin system to add a small piece of server-side functionality. But what if your site isn't static? What if you're at the other end of the spectrum and you use full server-side rendering? Well, let's try it. In this directory, I have a project using Next.js, which is a React-based framework that has support for full server rendering. I've just started with a basic example app. All I've done is added a library called crossfetch so I can use the fetch API within Next, and then added a get initial props method on the home page that hits that same geolocation API as before. But now I'm rendering that as HTML into the page. This is something I really like about Next.js, which is just how easy it is to start using React to actually generate HTML on the server, not just on the client. Here we can see that it's all working locally as we'd expect. Let's build it into a fab. To do that, we do the exact same thing as before, which is npx fab init. Next.js is one of Fab's supported frameworks, so it auto-detects everything. The big difference is that now we're using a different plugin, Fab Input Next.js. This module understands how to generate a Fab from a Next project the way Input Static could generate one from a directory of compiled assets. Note that the other two plugins here are the same as before. In fact, Fabs are designed to share a lot of the code between frameworks, so we can start to provide useful functionality that benefits everyone, not just those using a particular framework. We build the fab the same way as before, and we see that again, the first step is for next to build itself. So all of the optimizations that are part of that build are preserved. The fab build runs afterwards and packages everything up into a fab.zip. This time it's a fair bit bigger because there's a lot more server code, but that's no problem. And yep, our fab is producing exactly the same result as next was, nice. What I really want to demonstrate though, is that even though we're now compiling a full-blown server-side rendered component that uses React and Next.js to render HTML, we can use all the same deploy infrastructure to get it online. Let's grab our .m file, paste in the same deploy config into our fab config as before, and let's push it up. Now 
Now we're using the same S3 bucket for our assets, which might give you some pause, but actually this is totally fine. Fabs guarantee that all of your asset files are fingerprinted, which means that their file name contains a reference to their content. That means that the only way you could get collisions is if two files had precisely the same contents, which means there's no collision at all. There's a whole section of the docs about the guarantees that Fabs give you to be able to deploy with this sort of confidence. I recommend checking it out. And there we have it, a server-side rendered Next.js app running in 200 locations worldwide, deployed in a matter of seconds, and deployed with the exact same tooling and config as a static site, with or without some server-side logic. This is the workflow fabs are designed to make possible, to give you the best deployment experience no matter what it is you're building or where you want to host it. More importantly, whatever you choose, you're not locked in. As your needs change, as new frameworks arise, as new hosting providers launch, you can experiment with them and potentially adopt them without having to change your whole stack. The project lives at fab.dev. I'd love for you to check it out and get in touch either on Twitter or on Discord with what you think. Thanks for watching.